Jean de la Briere. Jean de la Briere, 16 August 1645, 11 May 1696, was a French philosopher and moralist who was noted for his satire. Early years. Jean de la Briere was born in Paris in today's Aison department in 1645. His family was middle class, and his reference to a certain Chiffre de la Briere, a crusader, is only a satirical illustration of a method of self ennoblement and common in France, as in some other countries. Indeed, he always signed his surname as de la Briere in one word, as evidence of this disdain. La Briere could trace his family back on his father's side at least as far as his great grandfather, who, along with his grandfather, had been dedicated members of the Catholic League. His great grandfather had been exiled from France when Henry Roman IV came to the throne and Catholics fell into disfavour. La Briere's father also had been active in the League under the Duke of Guise in 1584. His father was Controller General of Finance to the Hotel de Ville and, despite the turmoil in the country, was able to pay for La Briere's education and to leave him a considerable sum as an inheritance. He was educated by the Oratorians and at the University of Orleans. He was called to the bar and in 1673 bought a post in the Revenue Department at Keene, which gave him status and an income. His predecessor in the post was a relation of Jacques Benin Bossuet, and it is thought that the transaction of the change was the cause of La Briere's introduction to the great order, Bossuet, who from the date of his own preceptorship of the Dauphin, was a kind of agent general for tutorships in the royal family and, in 1684, who introduced La Briere to the household of Louis, Prince of Condé, 1621-1686. La Briere became tutor to the prince's grandson Louis, as well as to the prince's child bride, Emil de Nance, a natural child of Louis Roman XIV. The rest of his life was passed in the household of the prince whilst at court, and he seems to have profited by the inclination that the entire Condé family had for the society of men of letters. Very little is known of the events of this part or, indeed, of any part of his life. The impression derived from the few notices of him is of a silent, observant, but somewhat awkward man, resembling in manners Joseph Addison. His critical book, Characters, appeared in 1688. It garnered numerous enemies, but despite that, most notations about him are favourable, notably that of St. Simon, an acute judge and one bitterly prejudiced against commoners generally. A curious passage in a letter by Bala to Racine exists, however, in which the writer regrets that nature has not made La Briere as agreeable as he would like to be. Literary Activity When La Briere's cactus appeared in 1688, Nicolas de Malazie predicted at once that it would bring Biendes lectus et Biendes and emus many readers and many enemies. That proved to be true. Foremost among the critics were Thomas Cornet, Bernard Le Beauvais de Fontenelle, and Isaac de Bensery, who were clearly critical of the book. They were joined by innumerable others, men and women of letters, as well as a society who are identifiable by manuscript keys compiled by the scribblers of the day. The friendship of Bossuet and protection of the Condé sufficiently defended the author, however, and he continued to insert fresh portraits of his contemporaries in each new edition of his book, especially in the fourth edition, 1689. Those whom he had attacked were powerful in the Académie Française, however, and numerous defeats awaited La Briere before he could make his way into becoming a member among their ranks. He was defeated thrice in 1691, and on one memorable occasion he had but seven votes, five of which were those of Bossu, Bolo, Racine, Paul Pellison, and Bossu Rabutin. It was not until 1693 that he was elected, and even then, an epigram which, considering his admitted insignificance in conversation, was not of the worst, hair at lottery. Quan la Briere si presa pour quoi fait il crée haro, pour faire un nombre de quarante ni faut il passe un zero. His unpopularity was, however, chiefly confined to the subjects of his sarcastic portraiture and to the hack writers of the time, of whom he was wont to speak with a disdain only surpassed by that of Alexander Pope. His description of the Mercagal and his immediate mentor de Suzerain immediately below nothing is the best remembered specimen of these unwise attacks, and would, of itself, account for the enmity of the editors Fontenelle and the younger Corneille. La Briere's discourse of admission at the Academy, one of the best of its kind, was, like his admission itself, severely criticised, especially by the partisans of the moderns in the ancient and modern quarrel. La Briere died very suddenly, and not long after his admission to the Academy. He is said to have been struck dumb in a gathering of his friends, and, being carried home to the Hotel de Condé, to have expired of apoplexy a day or two afterward. It is not so present that, considering contemporary panic about posing, the bitter personal enmities that he had excited, and the peculiar circumstances of his death, suspicions of foul play should have been entertained, but there was apparently no foundation for them. The characters, a translation of Theophrastus, and a few letters mostly addressed to the Prince de Condé, complete the list of his literary work with the addition of one curious and much disputed posthumous treatise. Two years after his death, a certain dialogue sur le quai de Snaypert alleged to have been found among his papers and complete, and to have been completed by its editor. 
As these dialogues are far inferior in literary merit to La Briere's other works, their genuineness has been denied. A straightforward and circumstantial account of their appearance was given by the editor Debe Dupin, however. He was a man of acknowledged probity and he knew of the intimacy of La Briere with Bossuit, whose views in his contest with Fainal and his dialogues are designed to further as so short a time after the alleged daughter's death and without a single protest on the part of his friends and representatives, all of which seems to have been decisive in the acceptance of authorship. The characters Although it is permissible to doubt whether the value of the characters has not been somewhat exaggerated by traditional French criticism, it deserve beyond all question a high place. The plan of the book is thoroughly original if that term may be accorded to a novel and skillful combination of element exists in it. The treatise of Theophrastus may have furnished the concept, but it gave little more. With ethical generalizations and social Dutch paintings accompanying his original, La Braille combined the peculiarities of the Montaigneses of the Pincees and Maxims of which Pascal and La Rochefoucauld are the masters respectively, and lastly of that peculiar 17th century product, the portrait or elaborate literary picture of the personal and mental characteristics of an individual. The result was quite unlike anything that had been seen previously, and it has not been exactly reproduced since, although the essay of Addison and Steele resembles it very closely, especially in the introduction of fancy portraits. La Briere's privileged position at Chandelier provided him with a unique vantage point from which he could witness the hypocrisy and corruption of the court of Louis Roman XIV. As a Christian moralist, he aimed at reforming people's manners and ways by publishing records of his observations of aristocratic foibles and follies which earned him many enemies at the court. In the titles of his work and in its extreme desultoriness, La Briere reminds the reader of Montaigne, but he aimed too much at sententiousness to attempt even the apparent continuity of the great essays. The short paragraphs of which his chapters consist are made up of maxims proper, of criticisms literary and ethical, and above all, of the celebrated sketches of individuals baptized with names taken from the plays and romances of the time. These last are the greatest feature of the work and that which gave it its immediate, if not its enduring, popularity. They are wonderfully piquant, extraordinarily lifelike in a certain sense, and must have given great pleasure or more frequently exquisite pain to the apparent subjects who in many cases were unmistakable and most recognisable.